The stem cell debate is filled with controversy, questions, and confusion about science, cures, and how we should treat human life at every stage. While we prolong the stem cell debate, millions continue to suffer. And stem cell research offers hope, hope of a cure. The embryonic stem cell fervor, I guess is the word I'm looking for, has blinded people to what else is available. And as an individual with a disability, I don't want precious resources that could be dedicated to adult stem cell research to be diverted into very iffy and not very promising embryonic stem cell research. How the people of Michigan resolve the stem cell debate will impact countless lives, not only patients seeking cures, but young human beings some want to destroy, searching for those cures. It's time to learn the facts. The science of stem cells, finding cures, and protecting life. Viewed through the microscope, stem cells don't look like much. But stem cells are remarkable building blocks of the body that can repair or even replace damaged tissues and cells. There's a rich supply of what's called adult stem cells found throughout the body, in bone marrow, fat tissue, even the amniotic fluid that surrounds and protects unborn babies. One of America's leading adult stem cell experts works right here in Michigan at Wayne State University School of Medicine. The focus of Dr. Jean Peduzzi Nelson's research is learning how adult stem cells can be used to help paralyzed people walk and function normally again. Actually, it's not the focus of my life, it's the obsession of my life. <laughs> my obsession is to get a treatment out there for the patients that have severe chronic spinal cord injury. And this is what I've been doing for the last 15 years. Her persistence is beginning to pay dividends. Research she's conducting in the lab is helping patients get out of their wheelchairs or do things no one thought were possible. So far, this treatment has worked better than any other treatment that we have tried. And so I'm very excited about the potential of this. Many people don't know that adult stem cells are being used right now to help people suffering from all kinds of conditions, including heart disease, sickle cell anemia, multiple sclerosis, and much more. Pick it up. Pick it up. Let's go. Pick it up. The healing power of adult stem cells Good. is bringing new hope to spinal cord injury patients like Katie DeHaan and Jenny Rummelt. Tragic car accidents left both Grand Rapids women paralyzed from the waist down. Doctors gave them little hope of recovery. But intense physical therapy sessions combined with a new adult stem cell treatment only available overseas means Katie and Jenny are experiencing real progress. Just like overall, I was like totally different. I was like 100% stronger in everything I did. And I mean, it seems like something's always either improving or getting stronger or I'm feeling different things when I'm putting weight through my legs or weight transferring and a lot of little things that you wouldn't think about and you would take for granted, um, I'm able to do now. What is my end goal? Is to walk again. There are many reasons to be encouraged about adult stem cell successes, but it's another kind of stem cell that gets most of the news media's attention. Embryonic stem cells are harvested from live human embryos, which are then destroyed in the process. Human embryos occur naturally in the marital act, when sperm from a husband unites with the ovum, or egg, of his wife. It's the beginning of human life. Embryos can also be created in the lab, using in vitro fertilization, or IVF. One IVF procedure requires a technician to use a needle and inject sperm into a human egg. The new embryo is then implanted into a woman, where it continues to grow until birth. Thousands of extra human embryos are created by the IVF industry, then frozen and stored each year. Some people think we should conduct experiments with them. Some scientists claim Embryonic stem cells offer the best hope and promise for finding cures. But there are real scientific problems with embryonic stem cell research that no one seems able to solve. In fact, not one successful cure or treatment has ever resulted from embryonic stem cell research. 
and scientists now say cures may not emerge for decades, if ever. Embryonic stem cells are unstable and tend to form uncontrollable tumors if transplanted into the body. Experiments also show our body's own immune system may reject these cells if they are used to replace diseased or injured cells. To try and solve that problem and to create still more embryos for use in the laboratory, scientists want to artificially create or clone human embryos. Cloning is known by another name, somatic cell nuclear transfer. It's the same process used to create Dolly the sheep. Here's how it works. Several eggs are surgically removed from a woman, and the nucleus of each egg is removed and discarded. At the same time, an ordinary cell, for example a skin cell, is removed from someone's body. That cell's nucleus or DNA is then transferred into the human egg. The act of cloning is completed when the scientist stimulates the cell with a chemical or electrical charge. That triggers cell division, quickly producing a multicellular embryo called a blastocyst. This is the same human embryo conceived naturally by husband and wife in the marital act, the same human embryo created in the IVF process. All of them may be capable of growing into a full-grown child. What makes this cloned embryo different is what happens next. It is quite literally a matter of life or death. Inside the blastocyst are the coveted stem cells, but to harvest them, the scientist must always manipulate and destroy the human embryo. If human cloning like this becomes mainstream, the destruction of human life will be repeated on a massive scale. The cloning research uh, that the cloning researchers desperately want to do will require, um, you know, millions of eggs. Jennifer Lal wants to stop human egg donation for research because it harms women. Lal is a nurse and bioethicist working with feminists from all across the political and religious spectrum. Hands Off Our Ovaries is calling for an immediate moratorium on human egg donation for research purposes. Without more testing, it's impossible for egg donors to be fully informed about what they're doing. The powerful drug injected into women that produces abnormally large numbers of human eggs can cause severe health problems. The condition known as ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome can bring brutal consequences upon women who donate their eggs. Bloating and cramping and swelling and mood swings all the way up to serious risk like stroke, uh, like organ failure, uh, like death and reproductive cancers. The massive quantities of human eggs needed for embryo cloning research will harm women. Many patient advocates oppose embryo destructive research, not on moral grounds, but because they believe adult stem cells offer them the best medical hope for healing and recovery. But to what extent can we use another human life to help our own? It is a question that cuts to the heart of the ethical debate surrounding stem cell research. Can the end ever justify the means? Embryonic stem cell research is a kind of technology that always involves doing violence to young humans. Father Tad Puholczyk is a Catholic priest and a scientist. After earning a doctorate in neuroscience from Yale University, he worked as a molecular biologist at Massachusetts General Hospital and the Harvard Medical School. Father Tad is a leading Catholic voice in the fight against embryonic stem cell research. Although it has connections to religion, it is not, at the end of the day, a religious question. It is a question of basic human rights. The controversy, questions, and confusion about stem cell research will not end soon. Despite intense criticism, Catholic researchers continue to join others who are seeking to embrace and live out the gospel call to heal the sick while protecting life at every stage. The criticism leveled often at people who have ethical problems with embryonic stem cell research is that for some reason they don't care enough about suffering people. 
that they put uh, a moral objection above a suffering person. Benedict the 16th has explained this very well. He said that's, that criticism really isn't, isn't valid criticism. The Catholic Church, for one, has spent millions of dollars and, and countless effort in developing hospitals and treatments in the United States. They generally, over the years, have taken care of indigent patients. They have cared more about the sick and suffering than, than any other organization in the world. My feminist colleagues are united on the fact that we want women to be safe and well and healthy and protect. We don't want a biotechnology that abuses them. We don't want a biotechnology that profits off, off their bodies. And I just say, how dare us? Put their health on the line. Um, play with their own future fertility and be so casual about it. Patients are being told with various diseases and injuries to promote embryonic stem cells or cloning. But no one has revealed to these patients that there's a much safer and I believe much more effective alternative is to use their own stem cells. We go through remarkable and sophisticated mental somersaults in an attempt to tell ourselves that somehow this should be justifiable, that somehow this really should be okay, when in point of fact we know, just based on the basic biology, that there is a profound violation at the root of this proposal. Not only is embryo destructive research morally wrong, it has not cured anyone of anything. Adult stem cell research is already helping the sick today, while offering still greater hope for the future. The reality is, we can support the science of stem cells, finding cures and protecting life.